Hi everyone, my name is Shin Musai and today we are going to do this question. This question says, suppose the demand is Q equal 10,000 minus 1,000 P. P is price in this case. And the marginal cost is constant at marginal cost e equal 6. Now, it's good to remember that if your marginal cost is a constant marginal cost, therefore your marginal cost will equal to your average cost. For the given demand curve, one can compute the following marginal revenue function which equal to 10 minus Q over 500. So before we even go in, into doing part A, B, C, and D, I will show you how to compute the marginal revenue function from the demand function. So you have a demand function of Q is equal to 10,000 minus 1000 P. Therefore, you just solve for P. So you have 1000 P equal 10,000 minus Q. So P is basically equal to 10 minus Q over 1000. And now the marginal revenue would always have the same intercept as a demand, as a demand function and twice the gradient. So 2Q over 1000, so this is equal to 10 minus Q over 500. This is your marginal revenue. Now, your marginal revenue will always have the same intercept and twice the gradient as long as your demand curve is linear. Right? So as long as this demand curve is linear, your marginal revenue will have the same intercept and twice the gradient. So now we come back to the question. Graph the demand curve, marginal cost, and marginal revenue curves. So you have three curves to graph, and anybody who know me know I don't like to draw curves. So I'm not going to freehand draw it, I'm just going to use this nice graph that we have here. So this is it. This is your demand curve, this is your marginal revenue curve, and this is your marginal cost curve. Also, it's good to know that when you are um, plotting these curves, the demand curve and the marginal revenue curve, you should... Um, set quantity equal to zero so that you would know where it intersects with the price axis. Right, now part B. Calculate the price and quantity associated with point C, the perfectly competitive outcome. Compute industry profit, consumer surplus, and social welfare. Okay, so under perfect competition. We will set your price equal to your marginal cost, which is equal to six dollars. Why, why, why are my six looking like this? I don't like that. To six dollars, beautiful. So now that we have price, we could get quantity. So your quantity would be ten thousand minus one thousand times price, but we know price is six dollars, so one thousand times six, and so you have a total industry output of 4,000 units and the industry profit so your industry profits this will equal to zero because in perfect competition the profits are zero for each firm your consumer surplus under perfect competition would be a half times the length times the breadth of the triangle that you would that you would have seen before. The area of this triangle here is your consumer surplus 10 minus 6 and the quantity was um, 4000 is what we calculated. 4000 right here. 4000 units. So in total you should get 8,000 and then you have your social welfare which is equal to your consumer surplus plus your profits so this is social welfare for the perfect comp competitive outcome your profits was zero and your consumer surplus was 8,000 so in total, it's 8,000. And that answers part B. 
Now we move on to part C. Part C says, calculate the price and quantity associated with point M, the monopoly slash perfect cartel outcome, compute industry profit, consumer surplus, social welfare, and deadweight loss. So we have one extra thing added here, which is deadweight loss, which you won't have in a perfect co competitive industry, but you'd have it in a monopoly or any type of oligopoly. So for the monopoly, we have it at point M. This point C is your perfect competition. And this point M is your monopoly. And this point A is the imperfect competition or your oligopoly. So I just want to make that clarification. So for the monopoly at point M, we would set the marginal revenue equal to the marginal cost. And the equation for the marginal revenue was 10 minus Q over 500. And we set that equal to the marginal cost, which was 6. So we have 10 minus 6 equal Q over 500. So 4 is equal to Q over 500. Q is equal to 4 times 500, which is equal to 2,000 um, units. So Q is equal to 2,000 units. And if you have a quantity output of 2,000 units, then you could get your price, which is equal to 10 minus 0 0.001 of 2,000, which is 10 minus 2. So you have a price of $8. If you're wondering what, where we got this equation from, I'm just going to scroll back to when we were doing this. That equation came from right here. Industry profit This is equal, so your profits is equal to total revenue minus total cost. Total revenue is equal to price times quantity and your total cost is equal to your average cost times quantity. Now this question didn't explicitly give us the average cost, but it gave us a constant marginal cost. And if our marginal cost is constant, then it is equal to our average cost. Because for every unit extra, it's the same marginal cost. So it becomes the average cost. So this is equal to a price of $8 times a quantity of 2,000 units minus an average cost of $6 times a quantity of the same 2,000 units. And so we have a total profit of 4,000. Right, so we have the profit of 4,000. Suma surplus for the monopoly. This small area up here represents the consumer surplus for the monopoly. And so we need to find the area of that. We know the price for the monopoly e was equal to eight dollars, and so we would move from ten to eight, and we go from zero, and the quantity was two thousand, right? Zero to two thousand. So that that is the area of this small triangle here is what we need to calculate. So a half times ten minus eight times two thousand. And this should equal to 2,000. So that's your consumer surplus. Then you have your social welfare, which is equal to your profits, the profit of the monopoly, plus your consumer surplus. And this would be for the monopoly as well, because the social welfare is for the monopoly that we're talking about. And so that is equal to 4,000 plus 2,000. So in all, it's equal to 6,000. And then there's a the deadweight loss. So the deadweight loss, we don't, it doesn't add any value to the economy. This is value that we lose due to monopolization. And to calculate this, you need the consumer surplus for perfect competition minus the consumer surplus for the monopoly minus the profit of the monopoly. So remember, the consumer surplus for perfect competition was equal to 8,000. 
and you minus the consumer surplus for the monopoly which is 2000 and the profit for the monopoly which is 4000 and so you have a deadweight loss of $2000. Now the deadweight loss can also be seen in the graph. This green area here is the deadweight loss due to monopolization. This green area here is the deadweight loss due to monopolization. Now we can move to point D where it says calculate the price and quantity associated with point A, a hypothetical imperfectly competitive outcome assuming that it lies at a price halfway between C and M. Compute industry profit, consumer surplus, social welfare and deadweight loss. For the monopoly, the price was $8. For the perfectly competitive firm, the price was $6. And this point A, this imperfectly comp competitive point A, lies with a price way half between M and C. So therefore, the price of this must be $7. So at point a. So remember this is the imperfect market, so this is the oligopoly. Price equal seven dollars, and so the quantity would be ten thousand minus one thousand times seven, which is equal to three thousand. So you have three thousand units. The industry profit is equal to your total revenue minus your total cost, which is equal to P times Q minus your average cost times Q and so this is equal to 7 times 3000 minus the average cost of $6 times 3000 and so you have an industry profit of $3000 so this is consumer surplus of point A which is the imperfect competitive point and this will be a half and if we to know what the values are let's look back at our graph so at this graph, we see that the imperfect competitive part would go a price of $10 all the way to 7 And we want to get the area here all the way to point A. So the consumer surplus for the, um, for the imperfect comp um, competition would be this triangle here that goes to the, that is below the demand curve and above the price of seven dollars this area here is your consumer surplus for the imperfect competition and try to show you it one time one time i will show you that this small little triangle right here this represents a deadweight loss in the imperfect competition so right between the price of seven and six this small triangle here is a deadweight loss so your consumer surplus is 10 minus 7 times 3000 therefore you should get a value of 4500 and now you calculate your social welfare which should equal to your profit plus your consumer surplus your profit for point a and your consumer surplus at point a which is equal to 3000 plus 4500 and so you'll have a total of 7500 so that's your social welfare and finally your deadweight loss and you can see from the area of the graph that i just showed you before your deadweight loss should be a very small number in this case because the that the graph is um it, it represents a very small area on the graph so to, to calculate your deadweight loss you will first take the consumer surplus for the perfectly competitive firm minus the consumer surplus at point a minus the profit for point A and so this would be so yeah that weight loss would be 8,000 minus 4,500 minus 3,000 this is equal to a total of $500 now there's another way to calculate that weight loss you can take the area of the um of the the graph itself so the weight loss as I said is this red area right here this red area here this red triangle so let's see the area of that triangle is a half times 7 minus 6 multiply well we know that this the for the oligopoly data output of 3000 
So multiply by an output of 4000 minus 3000. So that's from here to here. Uh, this is from here to here. And you see this is equal to a half times a thousand, which is equal to 500. So we had the same dead weight loss as we would have got if we calculated using the equation. And I think that's the end of this question. Just no more things to be calculated. So thank you very much. Thanks for watching the video. Um, do like and subscribe and have a great day. Goodbye.